So today's theme is Society Beyond Borders. And as a researcher who's working with technology, I want to think a little bit about what that means in the digital realm. So when we think about the digital, we often imagine a lack of borders. And today I want to challenge that. I want to ask where the borders lie when it comes to our digital content and what they mean for our sense of ownership over it. I want to begin with a story about books. So in 2009, hundreds of Kindle owners who had bought certain e-book editions of George Orwell's Animal Farm, and somewhat ironically, 1984, found that these books had been removed from their libraries. Now these were books, they were refunded their money, uh, and for many of them that refund was what prompted them to notice that their access to those books had changed. And these were books that they, broadly speaking, thought that they owned. But ownership, when it comes to digital content, has many complexities. Having access to an e-book just isn't the same as owning a paperback. Indeed, a quick read-through of Kindle's terms and conditions makes it quite clear that you're essentially buying a license. You're able to access, to view, display, use that content on the Kindle device itself. And it's only when, for example, a company's ability to license that content is called into question, or if a reader wants to do something that falls outside the terms of that license, maybe they want to transfer an e-book from one, design, one device to another, that the boundaries that kind of underpin our access to this content come to the fore. Now, of course, this may not be news to you. I mean, we all know that digital content is bound up with new and different access models. Books, video, music, they're all subject to digital rights management. And of course, these new services bring many advantages. I mean, music streaming services enable us access to huge music libraries for the price of just a handful of songs per month. And I don't think that ownership is something that people who use those services are really worried about. I mean, I think it's obvious that if you use a music streaming service, you're paying to access rather than to be in possession of music. But I do wonder if there are other things on those services that maybe those people do consider to be their own. What about the things that they make, for example? So many music streaming services allow their listeners to create playlists, uh, to mark their favorites, to capture their listening histories. And these things are all products of the efforts and the actions of those listeners. But in the same way that I would struggle to transfer an ebook from one device to another, I might struggle to download my playlists or my listening history or my favorites. These things are just not packaged up in a way that allows me to act upon them. So again, boundaries assert their influence in terms of what can be moved where and by whom. But what I don't want to do today is make an argument against boundaries. I think boundaries bring complexities, but they also offer advantages. And in many ways, boundaries are inherent to what our concept of ownership is. So what I want to do is ask how we might rethink boundaries to, understand, to underpin a richer concept of ownership over our digital content. I want to suggest we might do this in two ways. Firstly, I want to think about how we package up digital content, the boundaries that we draw around it. Now, I've already kind of argued that a playlist or your favorites or your histories, these are not things that are bound up, packaged up in a way that we can act upon them. They're not like how we might think of as a traditional file. And this applies to other content too. So photos, for example. Now, I think we think of photos as file-like, as image files. But increasingly, we're putting our photos online, where they acquire likes, comments, they spark conversations. These things which kind of show the history of the object have in some ways been compared by people writing in my field to the kind of patina that a material object might acquire. So in the same way that a leather jacket might darken and soften over time, or a book might fall open at a particular page, or it might contain the notes to a TEDx talk. These things kind of show the history of the, of the object. They kind of add to its meaning for us. But increasingly with our digital content, these things are divorced from the thing itself. So the comments, the likes, they're not 
wrapped up with the photo. They're not part of that object. So what I want to suggest is if we could draw new boundaries around that digital content, if we could wrap it up in new ways so that the comments were kind of embodied with the image, or perhaps if my playlist could be something that I could bundle up, I could turn this into something that would be more keepable and that might have greater meaning to me. A second way of rethinking boundaries might be to look at those that exist between the devices and the services that we use. So if we continue with this example of a photo, this photo that might be online, that might be attracting this kind of patina that I've talked about, it may have counterparts elsewhere, but these counterparts are completely disconnected. So there may be a version on my computer, there may be a version that's backed up to a private cloud service, and at the minute these things are disconnected. So if we could link these things, if we could draw connections between, across these boundaries between devices and services, we might have a better sense of where the digital content that we care about is and what's happening to it. So if we rethink how we draw boundaries around the digital, if we package it up in new ways and work against these boundaries that exist between devices and services, what new actions might we underpin? Now, this book, if we come back to it, although it's I can, although simple, I can do a number of actions with this book that can underpin quite a rich set of experiences. So, for example, I could gift this book to a friend, or I could loan it to them, I could swap it with them. I could bequeath it to a family member. Um, I could throw it into this audience, or I could leave it on the tube. I'm not going to throw it at anyone. Um, <laughs> these actions... Uh, while simple, they just don't translate with digital content. So it can be very difficult to gift digital content, to lend it, to bequeath it. Uh, transferring ownership, relinquishing possession, these things become complicated. Um, and I think this is because the actions that we designed around our computer files, the grammar of action that was designed for the computer file, was designed for a world that didn't have the internet, that didn't have cloud computing, that didn't have social network services. Um, so actions that we're so familiar with, copy, delete, become complex in, an in, in, a, in a networked world. They don't readily translate. Copies proliferate, they're seen as cheapened. Delete really loses its salience in an online context. So if we rethink how we package up our digital content, we might also need to think about what new actions we want to design to go alongside it. And today I just want to give one really simple example, which is about giving. What if I could give you, transfer ownership, some digital content to you, um, such that I didn't have it anymore for myself? What would that mean? Um, and perhaps that would make sense if our digital content carried its own patina, carried its own history. I could give you a digital object that was unique, that I didn't have anymore for myself. And it could be simple things. It could be books or music. It could be something I'd made. It could be a playlist that's wrapped up with photos instead of album artwork, a modern mixtape. And I think if I could do simple, ad sim simple actions like this with my digital content, Maybe the ways that we started to think about our digital possessions might change. We might see them a bit more richly. So I just want to leave you with a question. If we could repackage our digital content in new ways, we could draw new boundaries around it, what actions would you wish to support? And how would those actions underpin your sense of ownership over it and play into the ways that we can interact with each other? It's my belief that it's time to redraw the boundaries around our digital content such that some are open to all, some are closed to oneself, and some are available for giving and receiving. It's my belief it's time to redesign the file and what we can do with it. Thank you.